we introduce regular product giveaways happening here on the Jeep Talk Show every month and sometimes every week. The world's most downloaded Jeep podcast will be giving you, the listener, a chance to win serious gear from major companies that you know, love, and trust. You want a chance to win tires, suspension components, maybe more? Listen every week for your chance to win big. The Jeep Talk Show is the official podcast of the Toledo Jeep Fest. The Toledo Jeep Fest is coming up the weekend of August 12th. That's right around the corner. What a great Jeep event. You don't want to miss out on this. Go to ToledoJeepFest.com for more information. The Jeep Talk Show has made all kinds of special announcements over the years. If I would love to add them to my collection, but I doubt, I doubt they'll let me, you know. And this is one of them. Pretty cool. Yeah. We're constantly working to provide you with fresh new content. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, and it wheels real good. And coming soon, a familiar face and a new name joins the show. Oh, God, no. Who's it going to be? I mean, I do 8590 down the interstate. Find out in the coming week. So you, you guys made me quit welding, so can I can I go back or what's the deal here? The Jeep Talk Show is the official Jeep podcast of Mr. Vanderquack. Quack. Keep listening for weekly updates about Mr. Vanderquack Quack. and his mission to help the children at St. Jude. Go to mrvanderquack.com. That's M R Vanderquack.com. Quack. <laughs> You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network podcast. Well, Nexen Tire USA, we got you. Find out more about the tires that are on the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator, the Nexen Tire Rodian MTX at NexenTireUSA.com. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Gosh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. So it just dawned on me. We, you, you guys remember the movie Super Troopers, right? Mm-hmm. Of course. Where the well, guy was yeah. doing the meow thing? We can do that with <laughs> Mr. Vanderquack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway, so uh, I just want to remind you guys, I haven't been doing this for a while, I remind you guys to help get the word out about the Jeep Talk Show, and it's so simple. Just put a hashtag Jeep Talk Show and a hashtag giveaways. I know we started off with just the hashtag Deep Talk Show, and of course, now we're asking for more, but that's the way it goes. Uh, put that on all of your social media posts, and then when people say, what the hell is a Jeep Talk Show? Then it's your time to shine. You let them know the Jeep Talk Show is the number one Jeep podcast. What is it, Josh? World? Universe? The world's world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Now, we know about the multiverse now, so could we expand into the multiple universes? I mean, it makes sense because mm-hmm. that means there's probably a Jeep podcast, a Jeep Talk Show podcast in every uh, version of, uh, uh, of the universes. Yep, I think you're on to something. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, and and again, pound or a hashtag, Jeep Talk Show, uh, hashtag giveaways. And uh, boy, do we have a bunch of giveaways. Actually, we've got two two going on uh, right now. We've got good stuff. Yeah. Yep, good stuff coming up. giveaways. No other podcast is doing this. So, uh, and I've already been asked, how do you you count uh, when you have two giveaways going on at the same time? How do you count the calls? He's got to take off his shoes and socks. It's it's that (laughs) kind of. I can, piece of uh, paper, a pen, I, I little can, calculator. I can count the tw- two. I can count the twenty-one in private. So uh, <laughs> we just got to keep the got to keep the calls. You know, the number of calls below oh, twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> if it's only that easy. Yeah. Now, if I fold it, I can count to twenty-two. Okay, Good enough. <laughs> it's a, it's a family show, Tony. Let's uh, get moving along. <laughs> hey, Jeeper. I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'll be talking about the latest award won by Jeep. The Bronco and the Wrangler have gone head to head again, and we have the results in this latest new contest. And if you've got a Gladiator, I've got a brand new batch of factory authorized upgrades that you may have a hard time getting your hands on. I've, I'll tell you why. And later in the show, I've got an all new must have for any jeep owner with cup holders well howdy it's wendy and today i'm sharing how patience can help a newbie that's it that's all you got oh, God. the that's three paragraphs got. that josh just said and you got the a sentence 
That's it, because it's right. really, really good. No. Oh, I like that. That's like a great quality explanation. Quality over quantity, Tony. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Something I would know nothing about. I'm Tony, and I'm wondering, did you miss our latest giveaway? Yeah, there are right now. two. Count them. One, two. Let me fold. Going on right now. I give you a hint. Listen to episode 633, our interview episode, to find out about the giveaways. Not fair, you say? Well, too freaking bad. I <laughs> recommend it to you guys to listen to every episode just as soon as they come out. So don't blame me or Josh or Wendy. We told you guys the same thing. It could be That's on right. any of the four weekly episodes. Mm. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Now, there's no denying that a couple of the Detroit-based brands that are unfortunately under the Stellantis umbrella right now, namely Ram, Dodge, and Jeep, are arguably truly American brands. With Dodge Hellcatting all of its models, the burnout brand, as somebody may, uh, some are calling it, may as well sell apple pies with each new vehicle. Ram has its built-to-serve edition pickups that have literally have American flags on the bed, but in the latest brand key survey, it's Jeep that people find the most patriotic brand of all. Mind you, this ranking isn't just about the automotive sector. The annual Brand Keys Patriotic Survey is all-inclusive for well, pretty much everything in the for-profit sector. From retail chains to online services, television networks, sports, anything and everything is open and included. So, Jeep is king of the hill once again. But let's put this into perspective by looking at who else is on this list and where they placed. Walmart came in at a distant number two. Disney has been slipping all over the place over the last couple few years and is now in third, proof that if you go woke, you go broke. Ford and Amazon tied for fourth, which sort of surprised me as Amazon sells a lot of Chinese crap. And of, <laughs> of any companies that could have rounded out the top five, it was a newspaper of all things. The New York Times came in fifth, and I would have thought that something like the failing New York Times came in before brands like Chevrolet or Hershey's. That's hmm. just odd to me. Now, focusing on mo the motoring sector, Harley-Davidson placed 14th, and Tesla just made the cut in 30th spot, tied with Zoom, of all things. No wonder, no other, uh, rather, automotive-related companies appeared on the list at all. The survey sampled nearly 6,000 consumers ranging in age from 16 to 65, and for those who would fall into the snowflake category, well, Brand Keys assures you they say that the uh, survey group was balanced with regards to gender and political affiliation, and they were drawn from the nine. They were drawn from different uh, nine different U.S. census regions spanning the United States. Over 1,100 different brands were part of the survey, with 50 ultimately chosen as the most patriotic. The list only includes 30 positions because many brands are tied in rankings. While the movement of brands in the list is common, Brand Key says the Jeep has consistently remained in the number one spot since their very first study was released back in 2003. That's pretty awesome, but I'm kind of curious who this 6,000 people are. They must all drive a Jeep. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, for we're, we're knocking on the door of now 20 years that Jeep has held the number one spot. Now, That's next amazing. year, 2023 is going to be the uh, it's going to be the 20th year. Uh, and I'll be damned if Ford is going to knock him out of the out of, yeah, that, exactly. out, of the, out of that spot next year. So we got to do what we can. Uh, but nonetheless, really cool. Uh, definitely some uh, some, uh, you know, brand recognition and bragging rights, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, they could have saved us a lot of time and money and effort if they just asked us. I mean, yes. they could have called into our voicemail line, you know, and we could have answered right here. I would have been happy to do the survey, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, well, maybe not money. Maybe they'd have to pay the same, but, uh, you know, because I don't want to go crazy, but uh, it'd be a lot quicker, a lot less work. Well, how about another Jeep versus Ford test? This time, it's a drag race. The Ford Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler have had an interesting relationship ever since the Ford fanboys have been saying that the Bronco is finally the only competition that the Wrangler has seen since its inception. The Ford Bronco <laughs> Raptor Edition and the Jeep Wrangler 392 are at the top of their segment without question. They are the most powerful models for Ford and Jeep in the off-road focused SUV market. Both have over 400 horsepower and a litany of upgrades for conquering the most rugged of roads less traveled. But what about a paved drag strip? 
They say the Bronco is designed to go off-road, but reality has said otherwise in many tests when compared against the Wrangler. Despite the purpose of both of these rigs being designed to go off-road, you know there's going to be some pavement-based showdowns from time to time as well. Well, one of these has happened recently in a controlled environment and was published by The Fast Lane earlier this week. On paper, it shouldn't even be close, this competition, really. The Wrangler's naturally aspirated 6.4-liter Hemi V8 engine holds a significant power advantage, making over 400 170 horsepower compared to the 418 horsepower from the Bronco's twin turbocharged 3-liter V6. There's an important factor to consider here, though, and it's not just weight. Obviously, these vehicles do weigh a nice bit amount, but this race takes place in the Colorado Mountains, a mm -hmm. full mile above sea level. And mm -hmm. as a general rule of thumb for engines is that a 3% loss of power is there for every 1,000 feet of altitude. So the Jeep's Hemi could be as down as much as 15% for the race. A considerable amount, not to be, dis, uh, uh, to be you know, ignored. Engines with forced induction also surface, uh, suffer the same effects of less oxygen at higher altitudes, but not nearly as bad as naturally aspirated engines. In short, this could actually have been a, a close race when you consider everything in, uh, you know, on paper. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for Ford, it wasn't. Sorry, mm -hmm. Ford fans, the Wrangler's high-output V8 is just an absolute monster, and it shows in this competition by just utterly beating the panties off the wrap. <laughs> time oh, I like what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, time like runs it. reveal nearly a one-second difference between the off-roaders and the quarter-mile drag race, with an average of 15.2 wow. seconds for the Jeep and 16.1 for the Bronco Raptor. For race fans out there, you know that uh, an over a second difference there is uh -huh. might as well be a, a, a world of difference. Uh, we That's were talking incredible. about something in, you know, where first and second place winning and losing is measured in one hundredths of a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but you have to admit that the Bronco is going to go slower with those front tires pointing in towards each other. <laughs> so it actually did very, very well, considering. Because considering. Oh, that's a lot of friction, you know, as you're, yeah. how do you steer that? I mean, you know, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a, a pain. And the other question I have, or the other statement I have to say about the Ford is, mm. you notice in the picture that you have there in the, the host show notes, and we'll have it up in the, the show uh, notes at jeeptalkshow.com, that the front of the Jeep has an iconic seven-slot grill. Yes. Whereas the Bronco has a billboard that says Ford on it. Mm. Well, it has to because it looks like so many other kinds of cars. It has to <laughs> it distinguish It looks like itself. a Mahindra. It almost looks it like a does. Mahindra. Yeah, that's what I'm does talking it? about yeah. is the Jeep. When you see the front Jeep. of a Jeep, yeah, you, you know, know what it is. Exactly. It, Jeep doesn't have to put the word Jeep on the grill. Now, you can do a Ohio with the grill, but I, but I digress. <laughs> you know about that one, right, guys? Or you just uh, <laughs> you change the slots to Ohio. It's really, it's really yeah. cool. So yeah. anyway, uh, I just think they're trying a little hard there in, in both categories. They're trying to be a Jeep, but they want to make sure you understand it's still a Ford, which if it was a full-size truck, that would be a good thing. If it's not a full-size truck, then I don't know if it's a good idea to let everybody know it's a Ford. I've got some news coming up in a future uh, uh, This Week in Jeep, and actually episode 635, we'll be talking about uh, full-size Jeeps and, and what, the, what, may be, uh, what may be on the road here Ooh. pretty soon. Yeah, I got a little teaser for you guys there. Might be uh, now, off the though, road, is what you should say. Well, I'll, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, now, here's another teaser for uh, anybody with a Gladiator. Now, the Jeep brand in Australia has just revealed a range of new genuine accessories for the G JT Gladiator. These new accessories comprise of a soft uh, tonneau cover, a sports bar, not to be conf confused with a sports bra, and a roll track <laughs> electrically operated aluminum roller cover. Now, they can be purchased individually or in bundles, and actually, if you do it in bundles, that's kind of the way to go. All these new accessories for the Gladiator are said to be locally developed in Australia and are now available uh, to order at any of the 60 Jeep dealers across the country. The soft tonneau cover has an adjustable tension and bungee system for transporting oversized and bulky items. When it's not needed, it can be rolled back and stowed away like just about many other soft bed covers. The sports bar is finished in a matte black powder coat and can be used to fit other accessories such as light bars and antennas. While these two genuine accessories, when they uh, are paired together, the soft tonneau cover is actually custom trimmed around the legs of the sports bar uh, to mm. optimize water management and ensure safe stowage of goods. The electronically operated roll track roller cover 
uh, comprises of uh, aluminum slats and are powder coated in black as well. The roller cover can be opened and closed with a push of a button from either side of the rear corners of the tub. It can also be paused anywhere through its range of motion with these buttons as well. There's an anti-pinch function that automatically stops the roller cover from moving once it detects a certain amount of resistance or load, so you won't have to worry about the kids trying to decapitate the dog or each other in the bed of the truck. The electric roller cover's wiring system is integrated straight into the vehicle's electrical architecture, which has factory waterproof connectors and body grommets to ensure seamless electrical operation while providing, uh, preventing rather water from getting into the cabin. At the front of the roll track unit is a separate lockable storage box, a trunk if you will, which can be used to stow valuables. These new accessories bring Jeep's genuine accessory range for the Gladiator to just over 60 in total. Some of the existing genuine accessories Jeep offers include front skid plates, cargo bed drawer systems, canopy, roof racks, and a range of decals among other things. Although these are released right now in the Australian market, there's not to say uh, a possibility of an export option for those interested parties here in the States. If you are such an ind individual, I would uh, recommend that you talk to your local dealer, dealer to see what they can do to help. It's pretty interesting. I kind of like it. I like the aluminum uh, slider cover uh, thing. Of course, the yeah. roll bar reminds me it's a little 80s-esque. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. In the tubular design and in just sort of the way that it's set up. Um, I, did I say roll bar? I, I think I meant sports bar because obviously I don't, I don't think this thing is going to provide any sort of structural rigidity. Mm -mm, no, uh, it's just in, looks. Uh, in the event of a rollover. Correct. It's just for looks. Yeah. The, the thing that I do not do not, and you can't see it in the pictures we have here in the show notes, but the thing I don't like about these, these roll bars, which... I'm, you know, that's when I was building uh, my off-road rig was the 80s. So I like this. <laughs> and I, I think it looks a little strange on a four-door. Uh, it look, yes. I think it'd look a lot better if the, 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 the JT was a two-door uh, yes. gladiator. I uh, agree 100%. Yeah. So, but the, the thing that I've seen on these, because they're available other places, is they mount to the bed, not mm -hmm. the bottom of the bed. But on top, top of the bed, the bed or at rail. least, yeah. yeah, the bed rail. And and that's not any kind of support at all. Absolutely yeah. none just, at all. Yeah. And it and is 100% is, for looks. Yeah, just strictly for aesthetics. And it and it really doesn't work. And I'm, I'm with you there, Tony, because uh, it makes the bed appear shorter than it really is. Now the Gladiator already suffers from a, from a short enough bed, as 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 it were. Uh, I believe it could go shorter just for the sake of, of departure angles. Uh, but but this does play a little bit of an optical illusion, and it makes the bed look a little bit smaller. Um, and with a four door Jeep with a four door cab on this thing, it just it doesn't quite proportionally work visually for me. Well, if you want to talk proportions, those poor bastards in Australia can't put lift kits on these things. Look at that thing with the little bitty tires, and it's a it's a huge <laughs> vehicle with the little yeah. bitty tires. I mean, I know it's still very capable, but just as far as aesthetics go, man, yeah. you need to get that thing. Those are that's a rookie lift. That's from the factory. You need to get those numbers up. <laughs> get those numbers up. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they're limited to thirty one inch tires or something like that. Oh over yeah. There. I mean, yeah. I can't remember the the interview with Dan Greck, but you know, he's he's transversing uh, Australia in a, in a Jeep uh, Gladiator uh, right hand drive, right hand yeah, right hand drive. And he's very limited in what he can do to that vehicle because yeah. of the restrictions in Australia. I mean, my God, uh, Australians are like uh, uh, the the uh, the people we have here in East Texas, and I can't believe they have all these rules. Uh, man, it, 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 we need to get over there and uh, Texasize the uh, the Australian uh, uh, Australians. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. And the other thing too about that sports bar, they mentioned lights. First off, you're not going to be able to put anything to go forward with lights not aiming really. forward. Well, you because can if you want to work on the top. You'll yeah, have great it's not, lighting. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. So the only thing I can see is doing something for like a backup light or something like that. Antennas. Or, or maybe side lights if you were yeah. doing some overlanding. Maybe you wanted some light. But to me, that's really something I wouldn't be offering as an option for people to put lights on that thing. I mean, that's where we always put the lights on the roll bar, like on the uh, the the... Uh, short wheelbase trucks with uh, you know single cab and right. and it wasn't too too bad but no. but but yeah i mean it was uh, of course they weren't even leds so there, there wasn't that much light to start with uh but uh, it looked really cool going down the road i mean let's just get it right to it with the, the kcs with the yellow kc covers oh, yeah. on, on it it was ah badass Still see them out here uh, on occasion as well the full-size trucks with the roll bar and the kc lights with the smiley faces up there <laughs> yep, you bet yep yep 
Well, if you've got a news tip response to any one of our stories, we'd love to hear what you have to say. The Jeep Talk Show is always looking for interesting people that have interesting things to say. You could be one of those. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find all the different ways you can reach out and engage with the show. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. And be sure to tell your friends that are into wheeling as well. we got something for every flavor of off-roader over at the 4x4 Radio Network. we got the 4x4 Podcast. We've got the Jeep Talk Show there. We're there, of course. Uh, the On the Trail Podcast, Trail Chasers, the Center Steer Podcast. It's all at the 4x4 Radio Network.com website. So the number four, the letter X, the number four, and Radio Network.com. It's a great place for all your off-roading audio needs. Be sure to tell a friend, and we'll see you there. Audio listeners, we're talking with Lisa, the force behind, one of the forces anyway, behind Mr. Vanderquack. And uh, Lisa, give us a weekly update. Absolutely, Tony. Hey, thanks for bringing myself and Junior back. Um, We are super excited uh, about some things that have taken place in the last few weeks uh, since we last spoke. Um, Junior is actually home getting a quick recharge here in Illinois right now. Um, he's getting freshened up, and he is going right back out onto the road. Uh, we are changing up our strategy just a little bit, which is going to include some one-on-one time with some of the G-Talk Show listeners. So we're super excited about that. Um, and we're going to be rolling out a little bit more of that next week, what that looks like as we work with St. Jude on uh, moving Junior across all 50 states. Uh, a lot of our time, Tony, right now is really kind of putting the wheels in motion for our Mr. V Hero Day on September 3rd. Um, you know, individuals, clubs across the United States are headed over to our website at www.mrvanderquack.com, and they are signing up and getting registered and hosting a Jeep cruise or a Jeep meetup, um, and they're doing a minimum donation with our Scan and Go uh, directly to St. Jude, and we are looking for some huge things to happen on September 3rd. Um, We just recently partnered up with some new sponsors that we're also going to be sharing next week, and, um, you know, Junior is just he had to catch his breath for just a moment because he has just been super busy. <laughs> and uh, we are definitely re-gearing and, and bringing some new things uh, to the table in, in the coming weeks. Well, I hope Mr. Vanderquack wasn't injured or anything. Uh, it's just a, a refreshing. I guess the, the GPS battery is what you're referring to as being recharged. Yes. So we are, um, while we are doing some updates to his GPS unit, um, he is getting freshened up. He's getting a bath, and um, he is looking fabulous. He is great, and he is super excited to get back onto the road as quickly as possible. And uh, he'll be headed out next week again, or, or I should say here in the next day or two. He's headed out one more time and uh, begins to, and to continue on his, his magical journey, um, raising awareness for childhood cancer research, and all the amazing things that the um, scientists and the doctors are doing at St. Jude right now. Um, Every dollar counts. And don't forget, uh, listeners, when you guys um, are jumping on, it takes literally less than a minute to head over to www.mrvanderquack.com, click the link, which is the banner at the top of the page, to make a donation directly to St. Jude, and every time we do that, we collectively, as a Jeep family, are changing the lives and the families at St. Jude, um, one donation at a time. And there's no donation that is too small or too large. Um, so we want to keep that on the forefront because that is the core principle of, of our mission, right? So we are just so excited and um, and loving the fact that the Jeep community continues to embrace Mr. Vanderquack Jr. as he is um, just continue on with, with the amazing mission and, and literally thousands of miles uh, under his little web feet. 
Well, Lisa, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, thanks for that weekly update. We'll be talking to you again next week. So, uh, Jeep Talk Show listeners, stay tuned for more information. Go to MrVanderquack.com. Look at the very top there. You'll see uh, Junior has his sights on raising $250,000 for St. Jude. Click here to donate. Click there and donate now. So, this is something you should know. This link will be in our show notes, uh, so you can just go to... uh, uh, episode 634 of the Jeep Talk Show. But uh, this is something that you should know. And and, it, and, and, and I want to make sure you understand, it's not important who gets credit for this. It's important that the donation goes to St. Jude and it helps children. But if you would like to make sure that uh, St. Jude and uh, Mr. Vanderkovac Lisa knows that it came from a Jeep Talk Show listener, when you make your donation, you can. there's actually a little place in there that you can choose uh, who, who it's from. And let me just give, r- do a quick rundown here. And it, this is the, uh, and these are the donations that are spe- have been specifically done for uh, Mr. Vanderquack to St. Jude. Ryan Mayer, $1,000. Bay Area Jeep Association, $500. Catherine Liska, $500. Bay Area Jeep Association, B-A-J-A, Baja, $500. Wesley Wright Gulf Gulf Coast Jeep events, $500. So you can see that there's some big donors going on here. But right now, Mr. Vanderquack has only raised 5% of their $250,000 goal. And it doesn't matter if you go in there and it, you do $5, $30, uh, or you know $55 million like Elon Musk did uh, after uh, their uh, Inspiration4 uh, mission. It, it, it doesn't matter how much it is. It just matters that you get over there, get in for the account, and if you want to put Jeep Talk Show in there, we'll show up on that list uh, as, uh, as the no- donations come in. And, uh, you know, frankly, I don't want uh, anybody to beat the, the Jeep Talk Show listener because, mm-hmm. you know, we want you, we want you guys to stand out. Uh, and it's, so that it, means it's a, somebody's got to come up with a one thousand and one dollar. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm hearing. It's kind of like you know, Price is Right. Yeah, I was uh, gonna I'll say one dollar, Bob. Come on down. Yeah, but if we all pitch in ten or fifteen, we'll be there. It's not a problem. No, seriously, that that's all it would take is for each and every Jeep talk show listener to donate like you know five, ten, twenty bucks even, and mm-hmm. and it, you know everybody donate what they can, even if it's just five bucks. I mean, get your get your name on the list. Get yourself, uh, you know, a little pat on the back for doing something good for for St. Jude. I mean, God, the commercials they air out in my region, they tug on your heartstrings every oh, single time. Oh, 100%. But, yeah. No, I mean, there, there is nothing that you can complain about uh, about St. Jude and what they do. So uh, get on board, help the Jeep Talk Show, help Mr. Vanderquack, and of course, help the kids at, at St. Jude. That's what it's all about. Hey, Jeep Talk Show. DR out here in Utah. And uh, a couple of things. Uh, I am using that uh, that uh, Rock Auto gift card to replace the radiator in the damn JK. <laughs> oh, it's been man. leaking since I bought it, but oh no, that's just it. It's leaking a little more now, so uh, we're gonna get one of them with that hundred dollar gift card. Love Good. Rock Auto. Gonna buy it anyways, and uh, just because you got a great show, I bought them KB. Not KV, uh, box, box shocks. I bought a set of them too. I had to send two of them back. Set X damaged them, but I got it back today and I'm going to put them on this weekend and, uh, uh, call Uncle because I want to win, uh, some tail lights because I got way too many Jeeps that need two tail lights because I'll stick out way too damn far. Okay. Anyway, Matrix. Uh, I'm not know if I'm allowed to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. <laughs> yeah, That's he's uh, he's talking about the uh, the other giveaway we have going on uh, right now. So yeah, with Tony Pellegrino and uh, Jen Ride Off Road. So uh, you got to get over there. You got to listen to episode six thirty three so you can get in on the two simultaneous giveaways. Yes, it's confusing, but it's confusing in a good way. <laughs> Let's talk about the Ace Engineering Lava Jacket. It's now manufactured by Steinjaeger Corporate Incorporated. It is a great accessory for chilly early morning trail rides or even that chilly early morning ride to work. Or how about late afternoon blistering heat Jeep excursions or that ride home? God, crank up the AC and get yourself all hooked up. The Ace Nylon Pullover Jacket offers an extra 
inner sleeve that actually connects with the provided vent clips to either of the center heating vents for the JT Gladiator, JL, JK, and TJ Jeep Wrangler models. The vent clip will attach to the center front vents for immediate coolness or warmth, depending on which way you want to go, circulating ever so smoothly for immediate body temperature relief. And these things really work. Ace Engineering also offers adapter vent clips, so if you sell your JK and buy a JL, well, all you'd have to do is purchase the related vent clip adapter for the JL, and your Ace Engineering lava jacket will continue to provide you with lots of comfort for many years to come. Well, lava jacket pricing ranges from $92 to $110, depending on the Jeep model, and adapter vent clips run around $20. Find all the details by searching lava jacket at the Ace Engineering website, or search Ace Engineering Lava Jacket online to find qualified Steinjaeger Ace Engineering online retailers. And our giveaway winner from Steinjaeger is... Ooh, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Nick R. But you guys Ooh. know him as Looting Lenny in the Zoom meetings. <laughs> Looting Lenny! Congratulations, Looting Linty. Can I just call you Looting? And make sure you keep us up to date on how you're staying cool or warm in your Stein Jaeger ja- Lava Java. <laughs> lava Ooh, jacket. Ooh, now there would be a jacket now, with Java. <laughs> now we're talking about keeping your coffee warm. So you exactly. know somebody's going to have a, uh, a Seinfeld type mishap <laughs> while they're trying to keep their coffee warm inside the lava jacket. So, you know, I was just thinking, Josh, when you were talking about uh, it being uh, cold in the morning and hot in the evenings, and this is probably around the country, too, but there are times in Texas where, you know, you it's the 40s when you go to leave, and it's the 80s or uh, 85 or so when you're coming home in the afternoon. It's it's heater oh, in no, the morning, it's, and it's cold, and it's AC when you're coming home. Yep. Uh, this time of year uh, here in Oregon, it, it's not uncommon for 30 plus degree temperature swings from, you know, uh, sun up to sun down. Yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. it's yeah, you know, 40 something in the in the uh, in the morning and then, you know, you're you're knocking on 80 or, or better uh, in the afternoon. I mean, this is pretty much the way it was the today. It was uh, 50, 52, I think uh, this morning uh, and then it got up to like 82 this afternoon. So, yeah, nice 30 degree temperature swing. Yep. And you know the best thing about these lava jackets uh, with these uh, the vent clips and stuff that, that, that you can get with them, none of them fit a Ford Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> now, not saying you can't use duct tape, but there you go. What? Where's the noob? Noob, 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 hey, newbie, newbie, noob nugget. It's time for newbie nuggets. Well, I love the jeeping world. There is just so much knowledge out there. Some not so good, but mostly really good information. (laughs) And as we wheel more, we gain experience. And I feel it's part of our job to pass that info along when someone is new or perhaps isn't aware. Now, being a mentor is not as easy, is not an easy task. It does take patience and it's not for everyone. Mentoring is being able to help that newbie at their level of understanding. Not just telling the newbie what they need to do, but rather helping them to understand why they need to do something. Now, we run into this all the time teaching and leading runs. I've learned over the years that people in general learn several ways, some by actually doing, some by reading about it, and some by listening, and others by a combination of all of these. Well, at the Four Wheel Parts Great American Campout we did this past weekend in Big Bear, we were asked to lead a trail run. Now, there were three trail choices, and Don, Bill, and I led one of the runs. These were all easy runs, but as, but as but always had some terrain in the mountains. There are some hill climbs, rutted out roads, and some erosion from rain and or use. Well, this was an easy run to us, considering all the trails we do, but for the nine Jeeps on this run, it was not so easy. Now, every Jeep on the run was capable, but some of the drivers had no experience at all off-road other than smooth dirt roads. I mean, this is their first time driving off-road. Now, at an event like this, people sign up for a run, and you don't get a chance to ask what their qualifications are. This event allowed people to come camp out, experience the weekend, and go on a trail run. Seems like a perfectly planned weekend to me. Well, we did have everyone air down a little and talked a little bit about why, but this wasn't a class, so the info was limited. Have you ever had this situation? Well, as a leader or mentor, there's a fine line between too much information and just enough. Now, once we got on the trail, we encountered two minor hill climbs with some line picking needed. I got out and helped spot the Jeeps through. 
what I discovered was that several Jeepers had never done anything like this before, and it was a bit overwhelming for them. One Jeeper even wanted to turn around and go back. I felt bad that they were kind of thrown onto the trail with not much experience in wheeling. However, my style of patience is to take each driver and build confidence with helping them through. I wasn't mad or upset. I was calm and ensured that their Jeep was certainly capable and that the trail was an easy trail and that they could do it. Long story short, they all got through this trail and everyone was surprised at how their Jeep performed. It turned out to be a very successful introduction to off-roading for these drivers. I was happy to see several of them come to us after to ask about further training and help to do more off-roading. I felt like my patience and understanding with the newbies helped me coach them through their initial fears and gave everyone a successful trail run. Now I share this info to help others who are mentoring new drivers. Try to take the time to guide them at their level of understanding. Had I shouted or acted like, wow, this is so easy, they should know this, I would have pushed newbies away from the experience. Instead, by being patient and treating each, each one individually, they all had fun and are looking forward to more off-roading. Now, our level of experience can be overwhelming to someone brand new, but keeping it simple and helping where needed with the basics is a great way to give back and help keep our love of jeeping growing. So guys, do you have any other suggestion on that mentoring? It's such a big, broad topic, but just a, a minor amount of it. I think well, uh, like you know, a whip of some sort uh, th that you can just <laughs> s slap them, you know, with a, yeah. just a nice gentle tap. I said turn driver. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, I th actually I think having the attitude of um, there's no wrong questions. Uh, right. And and it's it it's okay if you can't if you don't feel comfortable. There's no mm -hmm. judgment. You should do. You're the pilot in command, and you should be the one making the decisions for you. This may not be your trip this time, but you can you know uh, go think about it and come back another time. So I, I think those are probably the most important things. Is is just making people feel comfortable with the decisions they make, as long as it's not going over the edge of a cliff. You know. Well, that's true, and I think too a lot of times when we get into jeep runs there's a motive for let's get through the run, you know, let's get through this right. whole trail and maybe some mentoring needs to happen with some of these newbies. So they aren't feeling like they're just being dragged along, that they actually can feel comfortable or to pushed. ask questions <laughs> or push literally <laughs> uh, or pull, depending on the situation. But also at the same time, the, I felt like these drivers, we didn't know them. We just showed up. We're just leading this run. These people signed up. They're in this line. We take them out. Um, they had to sort of, trust us in a way you know and i think that's a huge confidence and something that you have to take as a mentor that somebody's entrusting your judgment and again these trails were not severe they really didn't even need much spotting it was more just to help them to understand the throttle control the climbing a hill is a little bit different than just you know pressing on the throttle you didn't want to go too much or too light so it was just a little bit of giving them that vote of confidence so what about you josh did you have a thought yeah, and it's actually, it's similar but different. I mean, all of this, you know, building of confidence and, and, and helping out a Jeeper and stuff was all kind of in the context of, uh, of spotting and actually being off-road. Mm -hmm. But that's really only just a fraction of what being a Jeep owner is. You still have to drive that thing home. You have to drive it every day for some people. And uh, despite how um, easy you are on things or, or whatever, things will break down over time. Uh, you know, your brakes are going to go bad eventually. You're going to need to do an oil change. You're going to have to swap out a tire, rotate, things like that. You know, the basic stuff. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, going all full MacGyver and redneck engineering on trying to figure out how to do a trail repair. I'm talking about just the basic stuff. And uh, I've helped a lot of Jeepers over the years gain that level of concept confidence in Jeep ownership, not in actually the wheeling aspect of it, but in the maintaining and fixing and upgrading of the Jeep. And if I can, just kind of get a little bit, little bit of an anecdote. Many, many years ago, I was helping a new Jeeper uh, with his XJ, his first Jeep ever. A uh, younger guy, I was in his early 20s, uh, uh, somewhat mechanically inclined, but, um, uh, you know, was working to be a machinist, uh, had to, had uh, done some fabrication work over the years, knew his tools and stuff like that, but didn't really know a Jeep and, and didn't know how to diagnose certain things or troubleshoot certain things, even though he had some mechanical inclination, um, come, came to me for, for, for some advice. Now, I could have done this one of two ways. I could have given him a fish or I could have taught him how to fish. Correct. And you know the old adage, of, you know, you teach a man to fish, you could feed him for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. I taught this guy how to work on his Jeep by helping nice. him work yeah. on the Jeep. And it's that difference between 
showing somebody how to do something and telling somebody how to do something. You get that aspect of here, let me show you some tricks. This is how you do this. Now you do it on the other side. Or, you know, this is how you're going to do it. Here's the tools. I'm just going to kind of point and, you know, tell you what you're doing wrong or what to do right or how to do the next step. You know, things mm -hmm. like that. It, you know, helping somebody versus doing it for them. Correct. And you, you find that 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 instills a great deal of confidence in the vehicle in the vehicle itself. And when you have confidence in the vehicle itself, you tend to be a little bit more connected with that vehicle. And having a deeper connection with your vehicle off road can actually increase your abilities as a driver when that vehicle is off road. You're going to trust that vehicle a little bit more. You're going to be a little bit more in tune with it, knowing its its corners, knowing its uh, its abilities can actually help you push your own abilities a little bit more while having that confidence in the vehicle itself. Yeah, I think this is great advice, um, doing it from both sides of not only driving, but actually maintaining the vehicle. And I think the biggest question we'll probably hear from newbies is, well, how do I find a mentor? And I think that's part of our responsibility of having experience is that we need to sort of be those mentors. And, and it might be I, I help one person for one run and I never see them again in my life, but I did something to help them. And yet there may be somebody in a club or somebody in a group that you're with that needs that sort of guidance and, and you can do that. So I just think it's more of a, as a newbie, it's okay to, to look around and try to find somebody as a mentor, but utilize that knowledge like, like Josh just shared. I mean, to be able to learn to wrench on your own Jeep is fabulous. Um, and just like learning to drive and handle things. So anyway, I just think it's important to remind us all the time that we are stewards of the land and we're stewards of jeeping. And, and part of our job is, I think, to give back and giving back is a way to mentor and help them out. So it was good. You know, it was a great fun. There, there was one thing that made this, and I, I didn't even think about it until until now, uh, while you were doing this segment, is, is that this mentoring that I was able to do for this for this gentleman Um really was facilitated by the fact that he lived about four blocks from me. Oh, And nice. although I didn't know that when we met, we met through a Jeep club. Mm -hmm. And it was really the only fact that he's like, oh, you live in this town too? Yeah, I live in this town. Whereabouts do you live? I live off that road too. And, <laughs> and, and so it's just really, really kind of fortuitous that, that we crossed paths and just so happened to live in the same area. But I was going to say to anybody out there listening right now, if if you're not in a Jeep club, if you if you're not uh, have some sort of affiliation with it, I would highly recommend uh, starting down that journey, going down the journey of trying to find a Jeep club that fits you. And don't worry if you don't find one right off the bat that, that's going to fit. It may be one of those things where you got to try on a couple different pairs of shoes before you find the right one. And and having that that Jeep club at your disposal, having those other people that that can mentor you or that you can in turn mentor uh, mentor others, is going to really open up an entire world of possibilities. It's all what we do in jeeping. I love it. Well, do you have a topic or suggestion for newbie nuggets? I would love to hear from you. Lots of different techniques and tricks, and also some great tips. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. So I'm going to jump away from the uh, the Gladiator talk tonight uh, and talk to you about something that recently happened uh, with uh, uh, a 2005 uh, TJ, one of the one of the mini Jeeps that are here at uh, Studio A uh, <laughs> in Texas. Uh, my older uh, oldest daughter is a 2005 uh, Wrangler, so um, she had described a starting problem to me. And, uh, you know, it's been getting uh, very hot here in uh, southeast Texas. It was 100 and 101 on uh, several days. And, you know, whenever, and if you don't already know this, that's when batteries normally go bad is during uh, high heat or extreme cold or just, just regular cold. Uh, and when I say go bad, it's, they're not brand new. They're, they're older batteries. And I looked and I showed, actually showed her that there's a, a date, uh, a month and a year on the battery. And uh, we saw that, and I said, well, that's, that's still pretty new, but it could be a battery issue. Just uh, take some time, run by Sam's Club or Walmart, and uh, they'll slap a battery tester on there, and uh, they'll, they'll test not only the battery, but uh, the alternator, and uh, that'll give you an idea. Maybe that's why it's hard to start. So uh, she didn't get a chance to do that, but she did give me a call one day while she was uh, uh, at the bank. She had, had stopped and gone in. 
uh, who does that anymore? But uh, anyway, yeah. she she came back out to uh, to start her uh, start her 2005 uh, Jeep Wrangler TJ, and it wouldn't start. Uh, all the dash lights were on. The radio played. Uh, the uh, the battery gauge uh, showed uh, 12 volts. So, wow. but it just wouldn't start. Would it crank? No. Oh, absolutely hmm. nothing. No clicking. No nothing. Like like completely dead just completely nothing. dead turn turn the uh turn the the start turn it to start and nothing happened i mean i the, the, the you know i think that the, the lights dim or something whenever you do that normally i don't know what it does in her case and i said well uh and it's a manual transmission uh jeep as all the tj should be because those automatics are crap uh but anyway so i said well sometimes the uh the new the clutch uh safety switch uh, goes bad or is not making proper contact or maybe it's got some uh, you know some distress on the contacts or something you know you know how contacts will, will gum up over time and mm-hmm. I said just uh, work that uh, clutch pedal up and down and uh, now uh, turn the the key to start and leave it on start and start pushing in your clutch and she goes uh, I, I, I hold it on start. I said yes, because it's not trying to start, right? She goes, yeah. So, so it's it's fine. You're not doing, you're not going to damage anything. Now push the the clutch pedal down and up and down. And she goes, oh, it started. I said, okay. Well, you've got a problem with the the clutch safety switch. They're real easy to change. This is right there underneath the dash. And uh, just remember that when you go to start it, that this is one way you can get around that. So uh, she got home. And uh, I think it was uh, this past Tuesday that uh, I was, uh, she parks behind the, uh, the, the Gladiator and I, I have to move her, her vehicle out of the way because I leave early, er, very early in the morning. So I went out there to start and move her TJ knowing about this issue. I couldn't get it to start. Oh. Uh-oh. Absolutely could not get it to start. I would hear kind of a clicking noise. Uh, at some point when I was pushing that clutch in and out, you could kind of yeah. hear it under the, underneath the dash. It's probably attached to a relay, which, oh, yeah. which, you know, could be a relay issue as well. But anyway, so I was, I was moving that thing back and forth and I couldn't get it started. So we literally had to push it out of the oh. way. Oh no. Taking about an extra 30 minutes. I had to wake her up oh, to get her to come sh- help me because there's a curve, you know, on the road for yeah, drainage. Yeah, of course. And, right uh, and it's so hard to push whenever you're, number one, not used to pushing vehicles like I used mm-hmm. to be. <laughs> and uh, whenever the, the wheels are turned and it's an incline. So anyway, we got it pushed out of the way and uh, got it going and uh, got my Jeep going and I got, I got to work. So uh, I was doing some research uh, as I had time at the office, and it, did, Josh, Wendy, anybody here aware that there is a uh, a clutch sensor bypass on Wranglers with standard transmissions? No. I mean, I know you can jumper it. It's called a, it's called a paper clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, but you do know that you can uh, put in a, uh, there's an open fuse holder. I mean, open fuse slot. And if you put a fuse in there, then you can, it disables the lights. So when you take the doors off, the switches oh, for the doors, you know right. about those, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeep and their infinite wisdom also put one in for the clutch sensor. And, and so, what you push, a, you put a shunt in there, or a fuse, you or something. You put a fuse in a, in a certain spot, and now it will bypass that clutch no pedal sensor. I had no wow. idea. That's amazing. And and from my research, and I was specifically researching the TJs, and the TJs have it. Uh, and I, but I I think I saw something about the JKs, and I suspect the 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 uh, uh, JLs do as well. I do, did not see that research, but you know, you, you guys can do some work by yourself, right? And I, I don't mean you guys; I mean the listener. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I mean, I literally could have just put a fuse in that spot, started the TJ, moved it out of the way, and been uh, in time to work instead of late and sweaty. Wow. And I thought it, you would have. I thought you would have climbed under there with a paperclip and just you know jumped that uh, <laughs> that 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 little circuit and and just called it good and see okay that's where that's what we're going to do for now. No, in my head it was just I'm just going to push this out of the way. I mean I've uh, I've pushed vehicles many times on my own, but that was 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, on the bright side, I did not have a heart attack and die. I uh, it probably would have been welcomed. But anyway, uh, so the the point being here is is that there is a bypass. For that clutch uh, safety switch. Now, 
uh, and my um, oldest daughter was concerned about you know well, uh, this is this is not the way it's supposed to work it's supposed to, that thing is supposed to be there so she wanted to get a, a replacement sensor and good on her but yeah. i told her i said this is the way vehicles used to be <laughs> this you know many years ago there was no s- s- uh, clutch safety switch and all that yeah. crap mm-hmm. you just push the clutch in or put it in neutral before you're going to start it and uh, I said, it's not a it's not a huge issue. You put your foot on the brake before you start a vehicle anyway. So right. you're holding the vehicle uh, uh, steady. I mean, you're not it's not going to take off anywhere, but it is a little more dangerous. So uh, anyway, I just want to make sure people were aware of this because it's probably a good idea to, to find out where your bypass is before you need it. And also to make sure you have the right size fuse for that hole. It's super easy to test. You just put the fuse in. And then uh, see if it'll uh, if it'll start in neutral or, or start mm-hmm. without pushing the clutch in. You put it in neutral, wow. uh, leave yeah, the clutch maybe out. Maybe do this on the street and not like in your yeah. garage where the jeep's yeah. going to start. It, go it, if you your put your foot, if you put, put your foot on the brake and hold it, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So, it was the big F. Yeah. So anyway, and I don't know, maybe this is something that's also on the, the Jeep Gladiator uh, when you have a manual transmission. Uh, now, does anybody have any theories? I did not look this up. I have an idea. But does anybody have a theory as to why you would why Jeep would put in a, a way to bypass the, the clutch uh, safety switch? So in other words, you could start the vehicle in gear. Remote start. I mean, not that you'd want that, but no, I think they, remote start would be a, a horrible idea for. <laughs> no, I, I can't tell you how many remote starts that I've installed on on uh, manual transmission vehicles over the years. Uh, it's something that people like and want and don't care about the risk. Um, I mean, there, there's a massive uh, amount of aftermarket uh, money spent on it. I mean, uh, most remote start systems, at least back in the day, were extremely expensive. They've come down uh, quite a bit now that there's a lot more uh, competition in, in the world in, in that regard. But, uh, but nonetheless, it takes usually a, 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 an afternoon at, at best um, and a skilled technician to install one of these kits. Uh, because of how many systems you have to tie into energize and uh, and all that stuff uh, sort of stuff in order for that remote start system to work properly yeah. and it's usually not that, that it's not that josh because you don't want to you don't want to remote start something that's in gear that's just a, a bad idea wendy well, any, no, any idea it, from it would, your side it would, you'd have to be in neutral still but you would still have to bypass the clutch right um, because Jeep knew they were going to have problems. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, so need a, a, we need to bypass for the TPS sensor then, yes, too. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, just because they were thinking. No, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think. I, I, I don't have a- I think it is so that whenever you're up on that rock and you stall the engine, instead oh. of having to play, you know, foot... Uh, footsies back and around and everything else that you can just hit that starter and start it right back up in low gear and continue on your way oh i don't know but that's my theory because you're going to be under load and if you're like in an off camber uphill situation you're trying to start the vehicle against gravity in gear that that's that's not that's not gonna i don't know i don't know they can't be just for bypassing a sensor so there there is some off-road reason i believe Sounds they, like we need to hear from some of our exactly. Our Who listeners knows tell us. Who knows the answer to this question? That should and, be one of the questions. And, and whoever comes up with the, with the right answer and a voicemail or an email, Josh will buy you and install a remote start on your vehicle. No, no, <laughs> you got to drive out to Oregon. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think I'm, I might actually have. I, I might still have a module or two. So I need, a put a, I need no, to put. No, a, no, no, I need to put. I need to put a disclaimer. Uh, Josh, not included. Right. <laughs> will not Josh install not a remote start. Exactly. Also. No remark, no, no, no. If they call in and give us the right answer, provided. which we got to verify, maybe we send them a Jeep Talk Show sticker. Well, it could happen. There's weird things that have happened before. It's possible, you know. Who knows? Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? I love the show. I've been listening to you guys for free for, I don't know, years now. And I figured I'd free. Totally get back. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. It'll just uh, help help the show out. And, and then in the end, it'll be Jeep Talk Show in my ear holes, you know? Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. It'd be nice to give back to uh, so that you guys can continue on. Because if they love the show, then why shouldn't you, why shouldn't you give back just a little bit. Wendy, you mentioned uh, Mike Zinn earlier. Do you know who is no longer a rat bastard? 
Mike Zen? No, I'm just uh, making that up. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he won tires, he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be a rap bastard anymore. Yeah, he sent us in, and I, I don't want to brag, but he uh, now has he is now considered a sugar daddy, sugar mama. I like it. Good for you. Good. Good for you, Mike. Top of the it. line. Uh, well done, sir. Yes, well done. top of the All line. All right. Package. The rest of the Zoom people need to step up. Then there you go. Right. Not that. Not that basic package with Josh and his googly eyes. We're talking about <laughs> top of the line. Wow. Uh, package there. So, uh, and and actually, Mike. By the way, uh, my wife was working on that today to get the the, the stuff sent out for you and a, a, a few other people that have signed up uh, to be That's paid cool. subscribers. So uh, you should get your uh, your uh, Jeep Talk Show. Uh, trip rated badge and uh the uh, one or however many pages it is of the uh uh rat bastard toe tag so thank you very much for your order and to the other uh listeners that uh, have ordered here recently so that's you can, awesome yeah you can go over to jeeptalkshow.com uh, uh and then look at the store and become a paid subscriber or get some of those uh much anticipated uh rat bastard toe tags so that you can put uh dirty filthy rats with these toe tags on unsuspecting jeeps Mike was one of our first infectious agents, I think. Oh, he made us a great he video. Was, uh, and he did a lot of them, too. Yeah, yep. yep. So he's he apparently is out, and he's ready to uh, be shot at some more. Which is more likely to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> too soon? <laughs> yeah, too soon. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and... Uh, Thank you guys for all your well wishes. I've beaten COVID. Uh, I came out on top. Oh, I forgot. I feel like uh, I've cheated death. I fear nothing now, <laughs> and I will prove it. Hey, Wendy, get in the kitchen and fetch me a chicken pot pie, woman. I'll show you a pot pie. Ow. Ow. Not the face. Not the face. Okay, the face. The face. All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. I really thought he was going to say lower, lower. Yeah. <laughs> or, but that's not why I'm calling. Yeah. Just that part. <laughs> oh, I did not know he was not well, so I'm glad you're doing better, Nikki. Well, G. this is Thanks what happens when you're not, when you don't show up for the show. <laughs> Apparently, when I miss a few, this is what happens. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Live in life outside of the Jeep Talk Show. We do not recommend yes. this for anyone. No, nobody. In episode 46, we interview Eric Zappi, the author of High Performance Jeep XJ Builder's Guide. Artec, who's the publisher of the book, they were looking to getting into doing a book on the Jeep Cherokee. They wanted to get into the off-road stuff because they really hadn't done it before. The publisher was actually unprepared for the, the response that they got and caught them off guard. That's how successful it was right out the gate. Where do you keep your books? Hey, I, I read in the bathroom myself. Well, I mean, what else are you going to do? You, somebody will come check on you if you start humming a tune. You won't know what you're missing unless you go listen. So, coming up uh, on our next interview episode, episode 637, Jim Kitson, Adventure Off-Road Driving School. And then uh, in two weeks, uh, episode 641, uh, Tara Thompson, Dixie Four-Wheel Drive. Two great interviews, uh, great information. Don't miss them. Comes out on every Thursday. Boys Day. You must have needed this every day. It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff, pick of the week for your Jeep. And this week I've got a little something-something for anybody who's got a cup holder. Not every Jeep came with a cup holder, but now <laughs> they do. And uh, yeah, that was a big thing for years. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I've got something for any Jeeper with a cup holder. Uh, these are high-quality auto coasters, if you will, that protect your Jeep's cup holder's surfaces from moisture, beverage overflow, and even heat soak from under vehicle temperatures. Silicone coasters are made from the highest quality, long-lasting silicone materials. They are easy to clean with soap and water and withstand all extremes of temperatures, including hot and cold. Made from high-quality silicone material, universal design can be used for drink coasters anywhere, but they are designed for Jeep's cup holders. Uh, come in a 2.75-inch diameter and just under a quarter-inch thick, and they are emblazed with the Jeep logo and have a nice grippy pattern on them as well. I like that look. It looks cl nice and clean. Yeah. And for 14 bucks, come That's on. That's so cheap. That so is so cheap. cheap. So cheap. And and 100% silicone. They're going to last forever. Uh, they've got the Jeep logo on them. They look cool. Uh, nice way to touch up the inside of your cup holders and uh, and make the Jeep just a little bit more yours. 
Yeah, I have uh, just some red ones that say panic button on them. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that you can push like the that. button, you know. To, yeah, right. Yes. That's anyway. good. That's good. But they're, they're kind of getting beat up. Yeah. <laughs> So they also, I'm just looking here on Amazon because I ha- I got some, not not these, but I got some similar ones that are kind of a weird shaped ones for the Gladiator because mm-hmm. the, the couple of her, uh, slots are weird shaped. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I just noticed that there are some in here that have uh, paws on there instead of Jeep. Oh, for the dog The people. Jeep dogs, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need some uh, ones with horse hoofs for, for you, mm-hmm. Wendy. Mm-hmm. And other colors like blue. Nah, red's not, fine. Not, not red, but blue. <laughs> <laughs> red's, red's fine. These that we're going to have a link for in the show notes for this episode will be in black and have a white Jeep logo <laughs> on them. Of course, you can uh, go from there and uh, just find something else for you. It fits if you like, uh, well, like Tony, like red instead. <laughs> But now that you must have some really cool Jeep coasters for yourself, we'll make it easy for you. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com and look for the link in the show notes for episode 634. Hey, before you do that, though, I want you to consider, well, marking the calendar. Save the date. Every Tuesday of the month, the Jeep Talk Show is recording an episode live, and you can be a part of it. Come around and sit around at the world's largest roundtable. It's all Jeepers, all talking Jeep, and who knows, we might even have an industry expert uh, come around that you can ask questions to directly. Be a part of the Jeep Talk Show as we record an episode on every Tuesday during the roundtable episodes. How to join in? Well, you just got to find out how. It's a secret. It's for us to know and for you to find out. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. It's actually very easy. No pay to play. Nothing like that. No special VIP access. In fact, if you want all the skinny on what's happening with the Jeep Talk Show, you need to find that newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You'll find a link to click and sign up for the newsletter. We send it to you, not a third party. We don't sell your information. You get one email a week and it's chock full of information about, well, how to join in on the Tuesday roundtable episodes, for instance. What we have coming up. Who we're interviewing, what we're giving away, and when. All that kind of great information that you can use to make the best out of the Jeep Talk Show that you listen to. Every Tuesday, the Roundtable episodes and the Jeep Talk Show newsletter. Head to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact for more information. Well, Jeeper, looks like this episode of the Jeep Talk Show has come to the end of the trail. But we've got another episode coming up right around the bend. Until then, be sure to continue to spread the word about the Jeep Talk Show by telling your friends and co-workers. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. More Jeep? Yes! <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Casting since 2010. I can see Josh on the job site, and he thinks he's all alone, and he's in there doing voices to entertain himself while doing some really <laughs> mundane crap. <laughs> That's the funny thing is, is it's true. I do it. <laughs> Oh gosh. I'm in there and I'll be like three or four voice, different voices in a row. I'm talking to the radio. I'm bullshitting to the toolbox, and you know, just. <laughs> oh, Tony, you know me so well. <laughs>